Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Star Flames. If you're new here, you guys know what to do. Subscribe, turn on your notification bell and join the family. In this video guys, we're going to talk about what critics have been saying. Well, let's get into that because critics believe that it is former business partners, Diageo, they are responsible for his downfall. In case you guys are not aware, Sean Diddy Combs took Diageo to the court and he took them to court back in 2023. He claimed that they were lowballing him by marketing his Dillion tequila brand only in ir urban areas. He's arguing that they did not give him a fair shot at the competition by marketing his Dillion tequila in the higher end areas. Now, Diddy came out with his deal on tequila. He owned 50% of it. Diageo owned the other 50. Now, following his argument, Diageo replied, asking the judge to basically, you know, throw the case out. And the judge is saying that there's reasonable argument there. So they're not going to throw the case out. Now, following that, did he immediately drop the lawsuit against Diageo with prejudice and they had settled out of court. But before that, did he also argued for Diageo to pay him $15 million in, mar in marketing fund? They, they told the judge to block his request because Sean Diddy Combs is a toxic. And following the lawsuit with Cassie Ventura, they labeled him again as being toxic and unfair and said that the judge should not grant him his request for over $15 million marketing budget for Dillion Tequila. Um, Tequila. No, they're saying Diageo's lawyer they emphasize that the allegations against Combs make it impossible for him to continue being the face of any campaign. And as such, they cut ties with him. He received a settlement, a undisclosed settlement, and they removed his face from every single marketing campaign. But here's the thing. When Didi joined Diageo back in 2007, Ciroc was only selling around 60,000 cases in the first six months of that year. After Didi's involvement, they saw a massive boost in sale. We're talking about the following year, sales grew to approximately 169,000 cases, coming from 60,000 to 169. And then by the end of 2009, that spiked to 400,000 cases. Then, um, since then, the sales have been, um, growing dramatically, selling more than 2 million cases. No, this has to do with did his partnership with them because honestly, before Sean Diddy comes, many people had no idea what Ciroc is or anything like that. However, we also have to say that Diageo did some impressive marketing that boosted the brand popularity. No, <laughs> you can tell that Diddy definitely did an amazing job. When he took them to court for lowballing him, he was suing them for 100 um, million dollars. Since he has dropped the case, he didn't receive anything because he agreed to, you know, drop the case. No, after that, Diageo cut ties with him. He got a settlement. No one knows the figure included in that settlement. But if you look back at that case, you could see that, you know, Diageo has been consistently labeling Sean Diddy Combs as toxic. But anyway, fast forward to now, right? Following them, you know, cutting ties with Diddy. And this is what is so odd about this. So they basically said in January, that's Diageo. They were like, we can't even use your face for ads anymore because you're just not marketable. So we are still losing because the ads that Diddy was involved in, those were already paid for and all of that. They're saying, you know, your image is toxic. Your likeness is toxic. So we have to remove everything. Following that, Sean Diddy Combs was notified of his indictment. Since then, he was arrested and he was arrested on charges of you know, sex trafficking, human trafficking, and racketeering. Now, 
he has argued bail two times so far, which has been denied. He's currently assembling a powerful legal team to face a three-judge um, panel in the upcoming third attempt for him to get bail. So based on how everything has been handled, you know, from the Casa Ventura lawsuit that was filed in November of 2023, leading to the numerous alleged victims that are now coming out, the fact that, you know, his home, his LA and Miami mansion was raided in March of 2024, him getting arrested and being denied bail, irrespective of him offering um $50,000 e um, surrendered his uh, travel documents when he was notified of the indictment. Also during that time, he told, you know, they wrote a letter to the judge. That's his attorney. They told the judge that he would not take any international flights. And if he had to take a domestic flight, he would be on a need only basis. And when he's going to do that, they will notify the court. He did everything that would have granted him bail, but irrespective of that, he has been denied bail on two separate occasions. Now, many people argue and say that, you know, this is a New York case. They're tough. They don't normally allow bail, but Didi has done everything that he should and can and his legal team to ensure that he was granted bail. However, irrespective of this, he is consistently denied bail. And so far, there have been over a 100 alleged, alleged victims and there are over 3,000 victims, or should I say alleged victims, calling the Diddy assault hotline every single day. So as, as such, based on how everything has been, you know, unfolding for Diddy and how unfavorable it looks with all of his celebrity friends, his connections, like Jay-Z, Beyonce, everyone has literally turned their backs on him. As such, people believe that this is happening to him because he took legal actions against Diageo. He basically accused them of racism and you know, while what he was saying could have been true or half true, I mean, the mere fact that you had a partnership with them, how much of a RACISD do you think they are? The mere fact they have basically given you most of your wealth, right? So I think that he really did make a um, bad approach there. People believe that is what pissed off Diageo. And when you look at this company, Diageo, you cannot see who owns the company. You're seeing like their major um, shareholder. So as such, it is leaving a lot of questions. It is, it is leaving a lot of suspicions. Many people believe that they are the ones orchestrating his downfall and they're going to take everything from him. Many critics believe that it is over and done for Didi once Diageo is behind it. But this is just what people believe. There's no evidence proving as such. We have to also make that clear. But it's your time to chime in, guys. Do you believe that Diageo is orchestrating Sean Diddy Combs' downfall? I want to hear from you all. Now, while you're at it, give this video a big thumbs up. Share if you care. Stay safe and see you guys later. Bye, guys.